Hi, welcome to this lecture on the development environment and the platforms that we're going to use in the serverless ML course. So we're going to use the Python programming language, versions 3.7, 3.8, and 3.9. Um, we're using 3.7 because Colab uses 3.7 currently. And uh, you can use 3.8 or 3.9 in Jupyter Notebooks, PyCharm, VS Code, whatever your IDE of choice is. Uh, we will be using Notebooks, but you know, VS Code and PyCharm support notebook execution as well. Now, what we're going to be running are Python programs as what we call pipelines. And we're going to use a platform for GitHub Actions to run those programs or pipelines. So the reason we use the term pipelines instead of just Python programs is you can think of a pipeline as being just a program that's run on a schedule or when it's needed or when some data arrives. It's, it's like a service almost. It's run on a uh, you know, once a day, once a week, once a month. Um, now, a pipeline is just a program. So one of the pipelines that we'll have in our first lecture, uh, you can see it here. It's called the Iris Feature Pipeline. And this is going to create the features from the Iris Flower data set and write them to the feature store. So it's a program. And what we show as well in the first lecture is, hey, we can um, generate some new synthetic data uh, write that data to the feature store and then run this every day. So that means every day we'll create new iris flower data uh, in a data frame and write it to the feature store. So it, that's why we call it a pipeline. It's the program that runs on a schedule. Now these pipelines are programs that we run on the schedule that are just Python programs. In this case it's actually a, a notebook and we can see that because it has this postfix. The file name has a .ipynb postfix. And that basically means our file extension because that means it's a notebook file. So in this case, we can also run notebooks, not just Python programs, uh, on a schedule. And we look how to do, do that in GitHub Actions now. Now, GitHub Actions is a, it's a tool in GitHub. You may have seen it. And if you look at the image at the bottom, you can see there's a button with a play, bo a play icon on it that says Actions. You may have seen this button in GitHub before and wondered, what is that? Well, it's a tool primarily used to automate testing and deployment of software. So whenever you push some code to GitHub, it might run your tests. So it's going to launch a, a container to execute some tests on your behalf. Now you can use it to launch and run containers running Python programs. And that's what we're going to do in this course. Now the program that is used to launch uh, these uh, pipelines or Python programs is called a workflow. So <clears throat> we're going to write a, a GitHub workflow. I'll go through an example of one on the next slide. But the workflow will do things like say, OK, run these steps every day at 4 AM in the morning or 11 minutes past 11. Uh, the kind of things you can do in a workflow is you can say, OK, well, what kind of ver version of Python would I like to use? What are the dependencies I want to install? What's the programs that I'm going to run? Um, so it's a pretty flexible framework for running arbitrary Python code. There's a very generous free tier where you can store quite a bit of data on these containers, and, and I think it's up to 2,000 minutes of free CPU time per month to run these programs, which should be plenty for our needs in this course. So let's have a look at an example of a workflow in GitHub Actions. This workflow, you can see the name on the first line. It's iris-feature and prediction pipelines. It's actually running two pipelines. It's running the feature pipeline and then the inference pipeline or prediction pipeline. You can run more than one program in a, in a given GitHub workflow if you want. Now, if we look at the second line uh, or second statement in this YAML file, this is a YAML file in case you're not you're curious about the structure, it says on colon. And this is when we're able to run this particular workflow. And the first line says workflow dispatch colon. And what that basically means is you will be able to run this pipeline through the GitHub user interface. A button will appear where you're able to just press on it and say, run this workflow. And that's nice um, because when you're testing, you want to just run it when you need to run it. When you're running more production code, you might say, well, I want to run it at 11 minutes past 11 every day. And you can do that with uh, this schedule section. And we have this cron uh, action. So the cron colon means we're going to use the cron format for saying when to run something. So it says, you know, uh, minutes, hours, and you also have days, week, of the, uh, week and months. Um, and then after that, we come into a section called jobs. This is the, the, the actual commands that will be run. And it starts with test schedule. That's from the historical legacy of GitHub Actions being used for testing. We're going to run just arbitrary Python program. 
and uh, it then continues with runs on. So it's, we're going to use Linux. Uh, we're going to use Ubuntu, the latest version of Ubuntu. So a container will be started running uh, Ubuntu. And then the first step we're going to execute is steps name. It's called checkout repo content. And the line after it has this word uses. Uses basically means that it's going to go to a marketplace of GitHub Actions. And there's one GitHub Action called checkout and it's available at version two. So checkout at v2 is a GitHub action place from the GitHub marketplace. And if you're curious, the GitHub marketplace is really interesting. You have um, you know, actions for running notebooks, in this case, for checking out code from your GitHub repo. Uh, the next action is for you know, installing Python. There's tons of pre-made ones, which you can make a lot of use of. In this case, it's going to check out the code in my repo. So this is the serverless ML course repo on GitHub. It'll check out the code from that repo into the container locally. The next uh, step is called setup Python. Again, there's a GitHub action for this from the marketplace. And we all we need to supply is the version of Python that we want to install. In this case, it's an older version of 3.8 uh, Python. You can change that one uh, to a, a more recent version of the 3.8 branch. The next step is we want to actually install the Python libraries that we need to run our pipeline. So you can do that by just calling the run command. You can see there's no users statement here. So we're not using a GitHub action now. We're just going to run some commands on the container. And the first command is pip install upgrade pip. So it's, it's basically going to upgrade the version of pip that we have installed because we want to now run the command pip install all of the Python dependencies that my pipelines will need. And they're defined in a file called requirements.txt and it's found in the root directory of my GitHub repo. So in this case, the serverless ML uh, course repo. The next line uh, or a statement is, uh, it's called execute Python workflows from bash script. And this is gonna run our pipelines. And the pipelines uh, firstly need a global uh, variable called an environment variable. And this environment variable is called hopsworks underscore API underscore key. And you define that, in fact, in GitHub itself. So you define it in the GitHub, um, there's in the settings uh, part, you have uh, on the left hand side, you have uh, our actions and you define secrets inside this action. So you go to secrets and then you go to GitHub action and then you define your API key and put it in there. So we need this API key as an environment variable because when we run the program, we're running it using what's called a bash script, a shell script, a program which basically will say, please run this Python program. And the environment variable or global variable will say, oh, here's the API key. So when the Python program runs, and it's going to be our notebook, uh, in this case, in fact, it's running two notebooks. It's running the feature pipeline and the batch inference pipeline, the prediction pipeline. And both of them will have this environment variable set. So when they connect to Hopsworks to write the features or when they connect to Hopsworks to download the data to be scored in the batch case, batch inference case, and um, they'll use this API key to, to, to log into Hopsworks and, and to authenticate themselves and authorize access to these resources. So this is basically a very simple um, GitHub action. This one is available in our repo. Um, you, you can go and look at it. There are alternatives to GitHub Actions. You don't have to use GitHub Actions. We're using GitHub Actions in this course because most people have a GitHub repo, uh, GitHub account, sorry. And um, you probably wondered what this Actions button is. You've seen it there. And um, now we understand what it's about. And you'll start to use it. And that, you'll find that when you start using it for running pipelines, you'll find that it's really good for uh, running tests as well when you push code to your repos. So the alternatives are, are you know, well-known um, cloud frameworks like AWS Lambda functions and Google Cloud functions, but also orchestration platforms, Airflow. There are serverless versions of Airflow like Astronomer and uh, Amazon's managed workflows for Airflow. There are other uh, well-known uh, serverless frameworks like Dagster and Prefect and Google Cloud Composer. Um, there are many alternatives, particularly if you're working in industry in an uh, enterprise environment, GitHub Actions will not be the platform for you. But the principles of running these workflows will be the same irrespective of what your serverless compute for Python platform is. So you can do this course and, and use the, your choice of platform, uh, of course. Now, where we're going to store the features, where we're going to store the models, so all the state for our serverless ML systems, we're going to store them on a platform called Hopsworks. Now, Hopsworks is open source, but it's also available as a serverless platform. It, it provides what's called a feature store, where we can write features as pandas data frames. 
we can read the, the features back as pandas data frames or as files and we can also get rows from from those uh, individual tables of features so we'll look at that later in real-time machine learning the second part of Hopsworks that's useful for the course is storing models. So we can register models, we can download models, and we can also deploy models on endpoints. So that's what we call model serving. So the model will be available over securely over uh, an endpoint, a network endpoint, so a REST call. Um, to, to use Hopsworks, you probably have a GitHub account already, but you probably don't have a Hopsworks account. So you'll need to create an account in Hopsworks AI. It doesn't cost anything. You get a time unlimited free tier with 10 gigabytes of free storage. And you can store tens of uh, what are called feature groups or tables of features and, and up to, I think, 100 different versions of different models. Um, model deployments or models and endpoints we'll get to at the end of the course. I think you can only have two concurrent running model deployments. Now, what are the alternatives to Hopsworks? Unfortunately, it's not as uh, wide as we have for GitHub Actions. There aren't any other um, serverless feature stores available today that I'm aware of. And the same goes for model registries. I'm not sure of any free tiers. There may be one or two. Actually, um, it's possible for model registry you could use uh, weights and biases. Um, but often the alternative would be just to build the infrastructure yourself. Um, and there's a good course for this given by Data Talks Club on, on MLOps, and it shows you how to build a lot of the infrastructure you need to, to manage data uh, and models. So um, Hopsworks is open source. You can give it a start on GitHub if, uh, if you want to show it some love. Now, the uh, UI is the last part, the user interface of our serverless prediction services. And we're going to start with uh, GitHub pages. Again, you probably have a, an account on GitHub. This is not Python programming. It's going to be just some simple markdown that you write. So it's, it's very human readable, very easy to create these dashboards and, and, and web pages for showing off your model. Um, and when you have a repository, so if you fork the serverless ML course into your own ac GitHub account, um, you know, then you'll be able to create a GitHub pages user interface for that account. And the way you do it is that you need to just create what's called a branch in GitHub. And you can see it's highlighted in red here. You can see it, there's a drop down selection box that has GH pages. Typically, main would be the default branch that you get, but you need to create a new one called GH pages. And all GitHub pages requires is two files at a minimum. And those files are called index.md, the markdown file containing the actual content of your, your web page, this GitHub page and then a configuration file to decide on the theme of your GitHub uh, web page, but also to you know a name and a description I think is in there. So let's have a look at an example. So this is a serverless uh, service that I built. It's for predicting the height of waves at a beach in Ireland called the Hinch. And um, it gives you a surf forecast. And it's basically forecasting the height of the surf uh, at the beach uh, at a given point in time over the next two weeks. And the user interface looks pretty simple. You can see it on the right. Um, we have the, the title, the Hinge Surf Forecast, and then the description. And they both come from this uh, config.xml file. So the underscore config.xml file, you see there's a title and description. And we see that appear at the top of the image on the right. So this is the page, in fact. And then the actual graph itself, you can see it's, it's in the index.md file. It only contains this PNG file, which is our graph. And that PNG file you can see is, is found in a repo called Jim Dowling that forward slash CJ surf. And it's in the main um, branch. And it's a file called latest underscore lehinch.png. So actually what I do um, to generate that image is we have a GitHub action which will uh, generate the predictions and save them as this uh, file. So it's going to save them as this graph in a file called latest underscore uh, lehinch.png. And there is another GitHub action to push that PNG file back to the repo. So when I run the, the workflow, it will generate this prediction of the wave heights over the next two weeks as a PNG file, a chart, and then it will push that code back to my GitHub repo. So then the user interface is now updated. The user interface is only pointing to that graph or PNG file in, in the repo. So anybody who goes to the chart and looks at it will see the, the latest predictions in this updated chart. Now, another way that we'll look at uh, doing user interfaces apart from GitHub pages, and we're also going to use a, a framework called Gradio, but to build a serverless UI, and the main real alternative is, is a framework called Streamlit. Streamlit also provides a, a, a hosted cloud service, so a free serverless tier, which is quite generous. 
Um, and we have an example of a streamlit program on the left. It's pure Python code, so no markdown even. Um, you can see what we're doing is we we're importing pandas, streamlit, and numpy. We set a header for this web page, and, and you can see that the header is streamlit for serverless ML. And um, sorry, that's a title. And the header basically says easy UI in Python with streamlit. Um, and then we have this next line is chart data. So this is, is a random uh, a pandas data frame containing some random data. Um, and it has three columns, data engineers, data scientists, and ML engineers. And um, you can see on the right the actual chart that's drawn. So it's generating three random numbers, one for each of the uh, three columns, the data engineers, data scientists, and, and ML engineers. And then it just uh, it draws in that chart with st.bar chart. So it's drawing a bar chart with um, streamlets in uh, internal bar chart support. And the data that fills up that bar chart is the pandas data frame that we created. So Streamlit is, is another great framework. We'll look at it later in the course. Now there's many references for you to get started uh, into GitHub Actions, into um, you know, GitHub Pages or, or Hopsworks and Feature Stores, and they're all listed here for your further reading. That's it. So I think you know, that's a very short introduction to some of the tools and, and frameworks we're going to use in the course. Um, feel free to dive in. Remember to go to Slack, to our Slack channel on the Feature Store org um, Slack board where you can ask questions and discuss things. And we then have our office hours as well where you can get real-time uh, questions asked and answered. Thanks, and uh, join us on the next uh, episode.